Hi, it's Brandon. Uh, welcome to the October beer mail uh, video. It's a bit dark. Fall is upon us here in uh, Northern Europe, uh, but it's fine. We're used to it. It's still kind of warm, just dark. Let's uh, start with our first beer. It's uh, another really good box. I know I say that every month, but seriously. So the first beer we have for you is Bullet Haze. This is a IPA with soba or buckwheat. Uh, this is a beer that we made specifically for the Japanese market uh, and working with our distributor there, A-Cube Evolution. Uh, they really wanted something with soba. It's a really big part of Japanese culture. So we uh, tried brewing it with it for the first time and this is the result. Have a nice uh, straw color to it. Uh, probably the first thing you will notice is that it's not so hazy. One thing we did not uh, think of or take into account is that soba buckwheat is quite high in protein, which affects the uh, haziness in a beer. So it didn't turn out too hazy, but it should still taste like a New England IPA. You do get a lot of the, uh, the fruity hop notes on the nose. Yeah, there's a little bit of sweetness, uh, but overall it's, it's quite fruity, uh, very low bitterness, easy drinking. Uh, I'll call percentage 6.4, um, really nice beer. The next beer we have for you is a collaboration called Boat Love. Uh, this is a collaboration between Mickler and Tim Vladimir's Kitchen and Brew House. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Tim Vladimir is a, a Danish guy uh, who was an actor turned chef, uh, turned media mogul, uh, he's a TV host, uh, has a really great uh, restaurant and cooking space all around great guy. Um, this is the first time we've brewed a beer uh, using his brew house. Uh, it's a dry hopped Goza. Uh, it says it's got a hint of coriander and it is 5%. Let's try it. Has the uh, pale, uh, almost whitish color that Goza should have. You do, you do get uh, some of the acidity on the nose and a bit of coriander, a bit of salt. Oh, it's really nice. Uh, it's pretty low uh, sourness. You, d you definitely get the, uh, the fruitiness from the dry hop uh, and a bit of the coriander and sea salt. Uh, really nice beer. We also have for you this month a series of three beers and we'll start with Zero IBU Triple IPA. Uh, you might be familiar with the classic Mickler beer 1000 IBU that was uh, part of the great bitterness wars of the mid 2000s uh, that all the microbreweries were joining in on. And we've kind of done that again, but in a series format. Uh, so you can kind of see the difference in how the hops are utilized. Uh, so here we have zero IBU. IBU is International Bitterness Unit. Uh, it's basically a way to measure perceived bitterness. So this should have no bitterness. Uh, and the way uh, that's generally achieved is there's no bittering hops. Uh, it's only used in dry hopping, maybe a bit in the whirlpool. Uh, so they're generally, yeah, no bitterness, very easy drinking. But this is also 12.1%, so it's a big beer. Let's check it out. It's kind of an orangish uh, color, very similar to the 1000 IBU. You do get a malt on the nose, kind of smells like a fresh brewing uh, batch of beer. Bit of alcohol on the nose. Some sweetness, uh, some booziness, some malt, but no bitterness. Uh, I think you can definitely tell this is zero IBU. Uh, enjoy responsibly with this one. The next beer in the IBU series is 1000 IBU, and uh, a decent amount of you may have already had 1000 IBU, but this is a new version, uh, clocking in at also 12.1%, uh, so it's a bigger beer. Uh, we've redone it a bit. And I know some of you are thinking, oh, 1,000 IBUs, that's not possible. Yes, a uh, human palate cannot taste over roughly 115 IBUs, but this is theoretical IBUs, and you can achieve that through hop extracts and various other ways. Uh, let's give it a shot. A little foamy because I rode my bike here and they were in my backpack, so they got shaken up a little bit. Same, uh, same color as the Zero IBU, uh, kind of a orangish brown, uh, very clear. You definitely get more hops on the nose of this, but you do still get the, uh, the alcohol sweetness, the maltiness. Yes, it's very bitter. Uh, it just uh, kind of lingers on the back of your tongue, uh, which is exactly uh, this great Keyshore drawing will show you. That's where you taste bitterness is on the back of the tongue. And uh, yeah, the back of my tongue is just 
got spidey sense, I guess. It's, it's good though, enjoy. The last beer in the IBU series is the 3000 IBU, uh, whopping 15 and a half percent. Should be insanely bitter. There's only hop extracts to use in this. Uh, so we're pushing the theoretical IBUs about as far as they can go. Uh, let's try. Again, it's the same color as the zero and thousand IBU. Uh, a lot of a uh, lot of booziness on the nose, and a lot of that uh, that delicious uh, roasted malt uh, type smell. Wow, uh, it's it is quite bitter um, and quite sweet, uh, and it definitely does not taste like fifteen and a half percent. So again, be careful with this one, especially in a 500 milliliter can, uh, because you drink one of these and you're gonna be on your way. Um, I, if I didn't know, I would guess it's probably 11-ish percent, somewhere in that range. That's bordering on the like uh, IPA barley wine uh, side. But it's really, it's surprisingly good. We're gonna switch it up with something sour for the next beer, and I believe last box, or two boxes ago, it's hard to keep track, you got the Hello Ich Bin Single, a raspberry Berliner Weiss style beer. Uh, more raspberries, sure, double. Let's try it. A uh, really nice 375 bottle with a foil. Looks super classy, great for uh, bringing for the holidays to your family, so they think you are classy and not just super into beer. Beautiful dark red color. Uh, I believe this is, it, it looks like it has more fruit than the single, that's for sure. Oh wow, it's a lot of uh, just jam packed of raspberries. It's like a raspberry jam. Oh, that's really nice. Uh, the tartness and the sweetness from the raspberries works very well with the Berliner Weiss. Uh, sourness, a bit of funk, really good. Uh, if you like raspberries, you are definitely going to love this beer. Uh, I certainly do, enjoy. We are switching it up to match this beautiful fall weather and bring you gently into the winter months. We have Beer Geek Fudge Sickle. Uh, this is one of the newest members of the Beer Geek family. Uh, like all of the Beer Geek beers brewed at Lervig uh, in Norway. This was a new beer last year, uh, the first time we did it. Uh, it's an imperial stout, uh, imperial oatmeal stout rather, with cocoa, vanilla, and butterscotch. Uh, and we were really trying to recreate kind of that, uh, that creamy, chocolatey, butterscotch uh, fudge sickle, which is a very popular American frozen dessert thing. Um, and I think we succeeded really well. Exactly as you would hope, it is dark. Uh, nice brown head to it. You get uh, a, lot of, a lot of vanilla and cocoa on the nose. Some of that uh, cocoa bitterness, which hopefully uh, helps kind of undercut the sweetness. It's like being a kid and eating a fudge sickle during the summer, but with booze, it's, it's really nice. Uh, it's not overly sweet. I'm not a huge pastry stout fan, and this, this is pretty well balanced to me. The cocoa really does a good job of balancing out the vanilla and butterscotch. Uh, also, 12%, I believe? Yeah, 12% alcohol, uh, so it will keep you warm as it gets cold. Uh, this is a, yeah, just a really, really nice beer and a very welcome addition to the Beer Geek family. Uh, the uh, penultimate beer for this month's box is one of my favorite Mickler beers of the year, maybe, maybe ever. Um, I'm not even going to try to pronounce the name because my Danish is not that good. Uh, but it's a collab we did with Urga, which is an alt beer uh, brewery based in Dusseldorf, which is where alt beer has to come with. Uh, it's similar to Kolsch uh, in that it's uh, not not a lager, uh, not not quite an ale, uh, kind of a hybrid. Just Google it; you can read more about it online. Um, but alt beer uses a, a roasted malt, so you have a darker color to it, uh, roastier notes. Um, and this bottle is is so cool. I love the German flip tops. Uh, one note uh, on the back uh, it does say that uh, it expires October two thousand nineteen. We are not sending you expired beer. It is the end of October, and honestly, it'll probably be good past that. Uh, in typical German quality control, they had never brewed this before, so they would rather give it a short shelf life of four months than a longer one and be selling a subpar product. Uh, I've been drinking this at home all month. 
and it still tastes totally great. I, I would guess it would probably be fine till six months, but drink it soon because fresh is better. Pop. I said, you get that, uh, that darker color uh, for the Danes almost like a, like a classic. Uh, you get the you get the bready kind of yeasty notes with roasted malts, a bit of hops, but nothing crazy. And it's just so smooth. Uh, summer, winter, fall, spring, doesn't matter to me. This is honestly a, a near perfect beer. Uh, I, I really, really hope you like this. I'm sure we'll make it again because this is a fantastic beer. Last but certainly not least, possibly saving the best for last. We have another collab beer for you. Uh, every year uh, for the last three years, this is the fourth year, we do a collab with Boone, uh, the Lambic producers from Belgium. Obviously, Lambic has to be from Piatland. Uh, this is Gout Merkane. Um, that was a term that used to be applied by champagne makers to champagne that was a bit more acidic uh, than the French palate deserved, uh, or appreciated rather. And so they would send it to America uh, because Americans preferred or didn't mind a bit of the sourness and it kind of used to be uh, denote uh, an off flavor that's not so much the case anymore especially with spontaneously fermented sour beers um, they tend to skew towards the more acidic side uh, in the US and so what Boone has done is kind of recreated that within the Boone Mickler world uh, so this in no way is is an off flavor uh, by Boone standards. It's just more acidic than what their normal uh, goose might be, for example. Uh, this is much more similar to if you've had any of their mono blends like Vat 108, uh, which added a bit of acidic punch. It's, it's really nice to work with the uh, funkiness. Really excited for this beer. You get, uh, get the green apples, the funk, uh, really great nose on this beer and it is exactly as advertised uh, it's a classic Boone Lambic uh, with the green apple uh, with the funk uh, with the minerality uh, but it does have just a bit of that acidic punch uh, that just kind of sits on your tongue uh, it's really nice keeps it lively uh, it's definitely drinkable uh, or like by a lot like it's not a it's not something oh you have a couple sips and you're done it's a really really well done lambic thanks so much for watching uh, i truly hope you enjoy this month's box i think it's another stellar box uh, and next month we'll be shooting at probably 4 p.m and it will be just this dark continually 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 probably until may next year so welcome to the darkness my friends cheers